Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode two with Shima and Emil Talks. Uh, thank you so much, Shima, for showing up another day. Thank you, audience, for showing up another day, investing your time and energy to listen to these two beautiful people talking here and conversating and delivering a powerful message at every single one of these talks. Um, so today we're going to be talking a bit more about some projects that Shima has been developing for now more than a year. And uh, one, she's, she started to create a book, to write a book. And in one of her episodes, in one of her chapters, she shares about self-love. And so I reached out to her because this chapter really was super insightful for me to learn about myself, what is self-love, what it isn't, and how can I learn to love myself even more. So I thought it was crucial that we would talk about it and, you know, be even able to identify what it is for all of you that are there. And as you know, guys, Shima is an amazing entrepreneur, CEO of Infinity Coach Love, and uh, she has amazing value to give. So thank you, Shima, for showing up today. Hello, hello, Emil. Thank you so much for another session. Thank you for your time. And I'm uh, here honored to greet your audience that are listening and sharing their precious time with us. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And you guys know it's Emil Klasson here. First question for you, Shima, and I think this is a great way to start, is what is self-love and what isn't? self-love can you hit on this point sure very good question actually self-love is a concept that unfortunately is widely misunderstood people often mistake self-love for egoism and egoism right. is based on only self-interest right when one only focuses on the self and doesn't take the other's interest into consideration that is the egoism but what is self-love self-love is absolutely the opposite means to love oneself unconditionally and accept the self exactly as he or she is. So what does it mean that I do not come to this world with the manual, what is right and what is wrong? We are going through a lot of experience to learn from it, right? So the mindset that we have, the belief system that we have is conditioned by our culture, upbringing, our parents and schooling system, the color of our skin, and many different things. So that belief system that we hold on to it for the entire life create our destiny. And we need to understand that there is, at some point in our life, we need to question everything that we have learned. And we have to start to reinvent ourselves, who we truly are, to come to the self um, awareness basically the main um, understanding of self-love is to understand who um, who am I right this question right. is very important and often we don't ask ourselves these questions right. and coming to the self-awareness and from that starting to accept ourselves exactly the way as we are we learn to criticize ourselves and this self-critics it's killing us constantly and um, if you observe your thought you realize that the 80 percent of them are unfortunately negative and this is scientific fact every human being have 60 to 80 thousand thoughts per day over 80 percent of them are negative because of the way we have Whoa. been programmed to and these negative thoughts are creating damage on our health because that's what a thought is basically having a relationship with our health constant continuously that we explained on other uh, sessions. And um, there is a lot of scientific studies about it, that the power of the thought and the emotion on the health and the well-being. Right. So if you really want to solve our problems, any type of problem. After so many years working with human beings, I come to this uh, conclusion that over 90% of the problem of the humanity is based on lack of self-love. Whether they come to me for relationship advice or they come to me for health issues or for 
uh, wealth and business issues, which are the three main pillars of the human life, relationship, health and wealth, right? Exactly. In all of them comes down to lack of self-love. If I understand who I am, first of all, I will have a different perspective about all this area of my life. And if I understand to accept myself, to let go of the self-critic and un- to forgive myself, which is very difficult and very important, and forgive others, then I'm coming to a different place, very empowered place. Then I can manage my life in a completely different way. That's that's amazing. That's amazing. And it's, it is so true. Actually, I want to hit on that later on. And so... Thank you so much for sharing that. And so what would you say in the country of what isn't self-love? How, uh, how can we, you know, separate acts of self-love with acts of that are not, not self-love that might, you know, trick our mind that, or make, you know, our emotions triggered, but they aren't. Okay. So very good question. What is not self-love, as we mentioned first, is this egoism is not self-love because that comes from self-interest, no? But if I learn to control my mind, I understand who am I? This is a very, very big and meaningful question that we must ask ourselves. Who am I? Am I this physical being having a spiritual experience or am I a spiritual being having physical experience as Dr. Mm -hmm. as Dr. Wayne Dyer said? If I understand that I am an energetic, spiritual being having a human experience, then all my perspective about life and everything that I do and every decision that I take will completely shift to another level. So let me give you an example of uh, basically a sentence from John Lennon. It's very, very interesting. He says there are two basic motivating force, fear and love. When we are afraid, we pull back from life. When we are in love, we open to all that life has to offer to us with passion, excitement, and acceptance. We need to learn to love ourselves first in all our glory and our um, imperfections. If we cannot love ourselves, we can't open fully to our ability to love others or our potential to create. So it's very important. It's amazing that if we can't fully love ourselves, how can we even tell someone that I love you if I never learned how to love myself? This is so critical. So true. And uh, and this 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 is uh, toward every one of us. Like we are in a society that feminine energy has been suppressed for thousands of years, especially with women. You see this lack of self love big time when they become go through the experience of motherhood which is the most important experience that a woman can do and most important thing that one can do is creating a new human being manifesting the spiritual realm into the physical realm that is so important they go through a complete shift and transformation and after that of course you are protective for that child and everything becomes the child. The child becomes first. And as you are running and managing a family, family comes first. So the child comes first, family comes uh, come first. If you're working, your works come first. And then all of a sudden you find yourself at the un- end of the list. Mm-hmm. You find that you have no time to do anything for yourself uh, you are completely depressed. Most of the women have this experience of the postpartum uh, depression, uh, midlife crisis, all because of that, the lack of self-love. I did not spend enough time for myself. And I don't say the other parts and creating a new human being and, and looking after that and looking after family and creating and uh, looking after the um, economy is not important. They are all important. But first, that person comes first. If you don't, you don't know how to look after yourself, you can't look after others. And this is true for men as well. Uh, most of the men in our society, they, exactly because of the, the feminine suppression, we have such an imbalance in masculine and feminine energy. They have been also 
suppressed and they are um, suffering something that we call uh, John Wayne syndrome. You know the John Wayne, the, the, the movie of John Wayne? Yes, I do know John Wayne, yeah. This, but I don't know what the syndrome is about, I'm curious. So this man that is a strong, alone, um, traveling, traveling from cities to cities, strongly he is deeply wounded in his heart, but he never shows and he never expresses. So this inner child, what we talk about, this, this uh, part of the psyche that is the, uh, it, it's your inner being has been wounded and you never pay attention to that. Go from one experience in life to another experience. So men come to the society, they are forced into the, I don't know, whether they're studying or working hard and then looking after the family and, and have a lot of expectations, is a lot of expe expectations on them, but they cannot cry, they cannot share their emotions because they're like, since they are five years old, we tell them, oh, you are crying, a man never cries, right? So yeah. from there, we are really creating this deep wound that this is a John Wayne syndrome, that they are not yeah. allowed to share their emotions. They are not allowed to yeah. be themselves. So we are living in a society that have this much lack of balance in the feminine energy, in masculine energy, and a huge wound on our inner child, all of us. Now, mm. when we tap into the self-love, we go deep to our childhood. We start to, to heal our childhood traumas, to connect with ourselves, to heal the people who created or caused us any, any trauma or any conflict, anything that we can't forgive. Start to go, to, the, to go there and to create that forgiveness. Connect deeply to the inner child. Pamper the inner child. Look after the inner child. And from that healing, we are empowered, a complete human, different human being that we are vibrating unconditional love. Because once I created that connection with myself and I have been able to forgive others and most importantly, forgive myself, and I have been able to look after my inner child, then I'm vibrating in a complete different level and radiating such a beautiful energy that is impossible to, to, to harm others, to damage others. Wow, that's so true, that's so true. And I love what you said about taking complete, uh, like pampering the inner child and giving that self-love and it's so beautiful, it is so beautiful and it's so real. And I all to the audience listening, I recommend you trying. So my follow-up question to you, Shima, is how can people take this advice into action so they can start applying, you know, what we're talking about here today into their daily lives so that they can, you know, start empowering their lives and start vibrating to that level of, you know, frequency that you've been able to experience? Uh, thank you, Emil. Very good question. So this is the, the first thing is to create the self-awareness, to ask yourself, who am I, first of all, and asking what is the effect of my thoughts and my emotions on my life and my well-being? So in a very quick way of explaining it and, and um, describing it is when we have a negative thought, the thoughts are based on fear. Every every emotions basically come down to two emotions, whether they are empowering or disempowering. Empowering comes down to love and disempowering comes down to fear. Basically, love and fear are two, two sides of the same coin, okay? So every emotion that you have, like ask yourself, first of all, how do I feel okay. about the, the, the specific situation or whatever it is? Do you feel empowered or disempowered? Do you feel anxious, um, stressed out? I don't know. Um, do you feel worried? Or do you feel uh, happy, blissful, joyful? The feeling is indicator to tell you where are you in your life. It's like a compass. So it's very important. The first question asking you, where are you in your life? Asking yourself, how do I feel? Now, look at your feeling. 
and try to track the thought that was the source of this feeling. Because guess what? Every feeling, every emotion has been followed by a thought. So when you think about something, that thought activates certain part of your brain that releases certain enzymes in your body. And that enzyme is something that we are translating as happiness or sadness or fear or stress or anxiety or other, other things, okay? So when you have this feeling, ask yourself, how do I feel and what was the thought? When you see the thought behind it, ask yourself, who created that thought? Okay, am I in power? Am I in a, on a responsible scenario toward my thought or I'm on a victim chair? And if you see and you find yourself on a victim chair, immediately change your chair and go to the responsible. Take responsibility for your thought. Once you take, become responsible, you change that thought to a positive thought, which will be followed by positive emotion. When you change the positive emotion, you are producing on-demand healing enzymes in your body. You're basically sending this message to your brain to release more serotonin into the body, for instance, instead of the cortisol that you had previously, which is the stress hormone and the serotonin is the happiness hormone. So when you release that, you start being happy and you start to go through toward the healing experience. So I give you just a very, very simple example on a daily life, like today in the Corona time. Okay. Yeah. Um, when you watch or hear a news about the Corona or about the lockdown or everything, whether you believe this is a killer virus that is there out there to kill you and is killing many people around the world, or you believe this is a pandemic and it's created there just for business and, and, and money, um, I don't know, interest. Whatever is your belief, because this is these two type of the bold beliefs that exist right now in the society. Both mm -hmm. of them, my fear, my, my friend, are based on fear. Okay? Because right. both of them get your power away. How is your emotion about them? When you think about, oh my God, a government... It's manipulating you with, uh, with, the, with the disease that is not even real and they put you in lockdown and they get your power away and they kill your business. How do you feel? Fear. Discovered. Fear, insecurity, stressed. And how do you feel if you think that there is a virus that is killing so many people daily and you cannot even have human contact with nobody? Hmm. How do you feel? It's disempowering. It's it's full of fear. <laughs> Absolutely. This is two main belief system, the two main view that that is there right now in, in the current situation. Both of exactly. them are disempowering. Both of them are creating more fear and more stress hormones in your body on a long run. When you have a lot of cortisol and adrenaline in your body, you are um, basically uh, suppressing your immune system. So what should I do? Okay, so I come to the thought that created that feeling, whatever of these two scenario was that thought, I feel responsible for choosing the right thought that is empowering, okay? And this right. is a very big question, is a global question, is something that it's not under your control. So you may not have control over what goes out there. But my friend, you always have control over what goes inside your heart. So you can change that thought to something that can be empowering, like acceptance, first of all. The new conditions is a condition that is helping our growth. And everything that is happening, it's serving our growth and well-being. I have come to this planet with the mission to be at this particular time on this reality. I have been equipped for it and I have been trained for it. So from a soul perspective, you can find an affirmation that you can change that limiting thought to a positive one. And right at this moment, you are sending the message to your brain to release happiness hormone or healing enzymes into your body. Wow. And immediately after that, you feel different. 
That's that's super powerful, guys. And, and just to go through it again, guys, make sure to write these questions down because this is life changing. This is something that I've had the privilege to to read through some of uh, Shima's thoughts and 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 creation, which is her book. I had the privilege to learn this and to read it and write it down. So I do recommend you guys. We said first question: Who am I? Right? Who am I? Right? Detecting uh, that feeling. Right? How do I feel? How is it a feeling of love? Is it a feeling of fear? And where does this thought come from? What was the thought that provoked this emotion, right? We said that and taking full responsibility of it, accepting it and getting rid of that victim mindset and getting responsible of that thought, being able to create an affirmation from a soul perspective. I think this is super powerful and Thank you so much, Shima, for sharing that. I think my pleasure. And it's not yeah. only about soul perspective. Even this is what the example that I gave. I think it's going to help many people because right now people are living in a state of fear. But mm. it can be in every daily situation. For instance, you have been betrayed. Okay. You have been cheated by your boyfriend or girlfriend or wife or husband or friends or uh, or business partner. Okay. And then you are feeling broken, feeling heartbroken, feeling um, completely, whether you are feeling that you want to have a revenge, holding a lot of grudge and resentment, or you are feeling completely depressed and blaming yourself for what you have done and what you haven't done in that relationship. Okay, so we are doing the same technique. Okay, how do I feel? Empowered or disempowered? But basically disempowered okay what is the thought before that if the thought is that he cheated on me or mm -hmm. or, or, or she, she she betrayed me or whatever mm -hmm. okay that comes as that am i a victim in that scenario or am i responsible in that scenario well if i am pointing someone else that did something to me i'm definitely a victim and i know that the technique is to change that chair and go on a uh, responsible chair okay perfect how I can become responsible by understanding that I am at power I am in power at any given moment in my life no matter of whatever happened to me until now from today on I can create a completely different future so what am I going to do to change that first of all understanding that holding resentment is like drinking poison and expecting someone else to get sick. Mm. This is very important to understand. If you hold resentment because of those negative thoughts are creating the constantly the adrenaline and, 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 and um, stress hormones in your body. Why? Because your mind goes on the fight or flight that we explained in the previous session. When you are on the fight or flight, because the brain is designed on your survival, not on your happiness, releases the hormones to survive, to survive, to survive and, and, and rescue you from a dangerous situation. But that is only in your head, <laughs> right? It's right. not even real. In Spanish, the thought is pensamiento. Pensar miento means to think lie. It's not even a reality. Hmm. It's just a lie. It's something that is in your head is a version that is in your head that is a thought on that moment. Because in the present moment, this whatever happened is in the past. In this present moment, that is not the reality anymore. So how am I going to change that? Looking at, thinking about this uh, resentment and the grudge that I'm holding inside me is harming my body creating a lot of disease right now in my body. And this is lack of self-love. So I definitely need to go through the forgiveness. And forgiveness is basically one of the most important tasks you learn to do in your life. And if you don't do that, it's like you are drinking this poison constantly, expecting someone else to get ill. And it's amazing if you learned that over 80% of the disease come from not being able to forgive. 
Louise Hay, she has an extraordinary book called Heal, You Can Heal Your Life. If you haven't read it, I definitely recommend you to go and get that book and you will see the emotional reason behind the physical disease. And she explained her own journey on healing her own cancer in a terminal wow. state by forgiveness. And this is my experience with my Spanish business partner back in 2013. You can go to my website and read about it if you want to know more. And uh, this comes also into the book that how I could he help him to heal his cancer in a terminal stage when they sent him home to die just by going through the forgiveness as one of the methods that we applied. So importance, this again coming to the self-love comes to the part of the self-awareness. When you understand who you are, that your thoughts are creating your reality, your emotions are affecting your physical health and well-being, then you start to change them. So you need to let go of that resentment. You need to forgive. Go through the forgiveness, which is a very hard process, I understand, but we have no way around it. Go through the forgiveness, forgive that person and forgive yourself, most important, because most of the time we have a lot of criticize about ourselves and understanding that, okay, it's okay to make mistakes. It's absolutely okay. If we don't make mistakes, we don't learn. And every experience we had until now brought us to the place we are today. So we have to bless them, all our experiences. Go through the forgiveness, forgive them, and forgive yourself. And you will see how much your life will be shifted in a completely different reality. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. And I 100% agree. I think... When I was reading this in your book and I was able to you would truly take it in and embrace it and, you know, learn from your teachings of how to forgive myself. Uh, I was able to let go of so much things that I carried from the past and acknowledging that I'm not the past. And what I was able to do is just, uh, you know, I, I remember this day it was I was biking and I had this conversation with my ex girlfriend and and you know uh for three years we had had a relationship and then the last year we were trying to get back together but you know the 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 energy the vision wasn't there and so I just needed to you know uh, talk to her and let her know that everything that I had done and that she had done is okay and we learned from it and we forgave each other and we accepted that and we were able to see each other as friends and i remember this moment it was so powerful it is so powerful that, amazing yeah it just released this wow it was it was like okay wow i can i am bigger than this you know so Beautiful. definitely definitely i love that i love that shima so would you want to add anything else before we conclude this amazing chapter? You know, we've been talking about what is self what, what it isn't, how to apply it, where to reach out to your inner child, and most of all, be able to forgive, forgive people, forgive yourself. Is there anything else that you would want to add, Shima? So this is uh, this has been basically very short, just introduction. Of course, application of it, it's much more deeper and requires a lot of practice. But if you would like to start forgiveness and the forgiveness, you need to learn what it is forgiveness and what is not forgiveness. So when you forgive someone, that doesn't mean that you need to hang out with that person. If somebody harm you, somebody break you, somebody steal from you, they don't need they do not need to be in the in your circle friend of friendship. You forgive them because you deserve peace. So this is not forgiveness to, to harm yourself again. Okay, this is very important to understand. And, um, and also it's important, of course, if there are relationships that you can manage it to become friends, that is perfect. But if we are talking about um, forgiveness that for instance, somebody did a really bad thing to you that, now you forget it throughout the time and now you go through the forgiveness process, which is also a very deep process, sending them love, light and blessing. You do not need to hang out with the same people again because they are in a definitely different vibrating in a different reality. 
okay? So right. um, that is important to understand. If you want to practice forgiveness, you can go on my YouTube channel. Just go to the YouTube and type Infinite Love Coaching Academy. Then you can see some of the meditations I offer there for forgiveness. Basically, the, the, the process is to imagine a beautiful light is coming to your heart and opening your heart center and visualize this beautiful loving energy coming out of your heart and going toward that person that you want to forgive and sending this loving energy and having them hold in the middle of your energy so because we are all interconnected because there is no difference uh, and a space between, between you and I, between none of us on this planet and on all the planets in the universe. We are all interconnected. When you are sending this loving energy to that person, you are breaking the barriers you created in your heart and the blockages you created in your heart to receive love. And you are releasing a big emotional pain from your heart. So you feel much more liberated and completely empowered to start again. So it's very important sending this. And so you can use those meditations to go through to the forgiveness. Now for the self-love, one of the things that we mentioned and basically uh, that Emil also put them together on going through the self-awareness, asking who am I, what is the uh, power of my thought and my emotions or my well-being changing that thought. One of the main exercises we do and we use uh, which is funded by Louise Hay. Um, it's mirror work, working with the mirror, because once you sit in front of the mirror and looking deeply into your eyes, you will encounter that inner child, that beautiful soul that is pure and is inside you. So um, this is a very deep process. Unfortunately, we are run out of time right now. I cannot go through it, but we will have another session explain, exp explaining the mirror work. But what I would recommend you, that's something that you can do right now, right away, to shift your life in a completely, um, uh, basically, um, uh, different way. It's to get this book. Uh, the name is 21 Day Exercises with Mirror from Louise Hay. And start to do every day one of those exercises. Every single person that I work with, that they apply this book after three or four days or weeks, they come to me and they said, I do not recognize the person who entered this office a couple of days ago. You will transform your life and you will become empowered. So it's a very good guidance. You can just do it yourself and motivate yourself to do that. Or if you need some help, you can always reach out to, to, to us or anybody um, who, who you can trust and they can help you to stay committed and do the exercises of the book. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Thank you so much, Shima, for your advice, your words. It's truly inspiring to, and it's a privilege to be able to hop on, on these talks with you. And every time I listen to you, I learn something new. So it's truly empower, empowering. Um, I truly... I want to tell the audience that go check out Infinity Love Coaching Academy on YouTube. This is where these uh, talks will be on and leave a comment, leave a like, something that you guys would want to learn, take away from these talks. Uh, really, Shima is uh, like a Wikipedia. <laughs> so like she, she has so much knowledge and so much love to share. So do I. And I'm just here to learn with you guys as well. And as well, listen to beautiful Shima. Thank, so you, thank, so you, thank, you, thank you so much, Emil. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time and for your energy. And you are yourself and inspiring for the human being. And thank you so much for your time. And I'm always a student on this life. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Shima. <laughs> thank you. God bless you all. God bless you all. Have a great day. Bye.